Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, Tea Sippers, welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea, and I have my girl, Emily, in the house as well. Hey, everybody. I hope you're doing good tonight. It is a lot going on. It is the end of January. I cannot believe how fast this month has gone. It has went by so fast, but 2022 went by really fast, too, so. Yeah. 2023, too. Yeah, it just seems like I can't believe we were just waiting, you know, for New Year's and mm-hmm. it just felt like it not too long ago was Christmas and now, you know, Valentine's Day is like two weeks away. So it is a lot going on. And one of the things that's going on right now that a lot of people are talking about is the whole Tyree Nichols situation. Um, I did a podcast on Sunday about my thoughts and how I felt about the situation. And I know that you're in Memphis. So mm-hmm. I want to just kind of ask you a few things, being that you live in the city. Um, mm-hmm. You know, how was it this weekend? Um, from what I saw in the news, I saw mainly peaceful protesting. Um, how do you feel like, you know, how are the people down in Memphis feeling about this entire situation? Um, well, it's really interesting because with the uh, obviously everybody's really sad. I'm a very sensitive person. So I don't know if it's just me, like I'm not trying to like sound dramatic, but I don't know. There's just days like I do get very emotional thinking about it or Mm -hmm. talking about it. Um, But anyways, as far as like everybody, I think everybody's just really upset and really sad. But um, as far as the city of Memphis goes, uh, we get a bad rep because everyone thinks that, oh, it's just it's a war zone out here. And yes, there is a lot of crime, but um, the protests were peaceful. You know, they were like. I don't know how many text messages I got. It was like, be safe. You know, people are going to go crazy. I never really thought that was going to happen. Um, last time we had protests, I mean, there's protests all the time, but uh, summer of 2020, when we were downtown protesting, it was very peaceful. It was a lot of unity there. Like the energy was really, really good. People weren't on like no crazy type stuff or anything like that. So that's pretty much kind of what I felt was demonstrated this weekend. People Mm -hmm. just, you know, stood together as a city. I'm sure, you know, usually people go to the bridge. That's the thing. So, you know, traffic got uh, got um, backed up a little bit, but nothing crazy. You know what I mean? Right. Well, that's good to hear, you know, and just like you, we've dealt with a lot of stuff here in the Twin Cities. Right. Um, You know, the George Ford situation. Unlike y'all, we wilded out. (laughs) <laughs> the Minnesotans yeah. <laughs> were not having it. They they tore this entire city up from St. Paul to the, you know, south side of Minneapolis, north side. You know, the city was definitely in turmoil. Um, yeah. But we're starting to bounce back a little bit. But as far as policing, I mean, it's been really affected. And the same thing may happen to you all as well, where you guys will lose even more people off of the police force. Um, yeah. Today, I was talking to one of my contractors. He was here fixing some stuff at the house. And he was saying that, you know, a few of his friends, they work for the fire department in the Twin Cities. And he's saying it's so bad now that when you call 911 out here in the Twin Cities, the police are not coming on time. You know, they're taking their time to the point where people are now calling the fire department. So the fire department is now starting to get 911 calls. And their only mm-hmm. job really is to put out fires and maybe, you know, deal with like resuscitation, you know, CPR stuff. And so he said his buddies, you know, they'll get called out to a scene and they're getting there before the police. And it's like a whole shootout. Well, yeah. you know, the fire department, they're not equipped to deal. They don't even have training to deal with like active shooters and, right. you know, they don't have bulletproof vests. So it's but it's gotten that bad because there's not enough police and, you know, they're stretched so thin. And because so many police officers quit after 2020, the city has really been struggling. You know, even in the school system, they took all the police out. So now a lot of the inner city schools are so unsafe. You know, it's constant stories of guns being brought into the school. Um, so it's just it's it's insane. So I would say to be on the lookout for that. I mean, 
Well, Hopefully. we've definitely, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. We, so before, um, even before 2020, there was a thing, um, people in the area might remember, uh, it was the blue flu. That's what they were calling it. And a lot of the, um, officers or the people in the police department, maybe not even like police officers, but just like them as a whole, whether it's like dispatch, whatever. Um, a lot of people started that worked for the, uh, MPD started calling in because they, uh, it's been a while, but this was before 2020 and they were already having issues. I guess they, I don't know if they were like cutting back their benefits, their pensions, whatever. So from my understanding that it being understaffed, not properly trained, all that has just been an issue here for a while as well. I don't really know how much better it's gotten or not, but I know as a city, Memphis has definitely struggled with, um, I guess, being short-staffed. Mm, okay. So you guys are seeing it too. Yeah, yeah, it's been a thing for a while here for sure. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how everything plays out. I definitely think that every officer involved needs to be charged and prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Yes, um, absolutely. You know, the video was just disgusting. The way that that young man was handled was just, just insane. I couldn't even imagine being pulled out my car like that and, you know, just talk too crazy and beat up. So prayers definitely to his family, prayers to y'all there in Memphis. Um, yeah, I definitely. hope that, yeah, I hope that everything just goes good and it doesn't get crazy and, you know, more upheaval arises. So y'all yeah, definitely absolutely. Rest. Yeah. Rest in peace to him. Um, and, you know, hopefully justice is served. It's just a really sad situation. Um, I feel like a lot of people all kind of feel the same way, that it's just really sad and everybody's really sad and upset and disappointed. And I was really proud of the city um, because it was very, like everybody just came together. I mean, I'm sure there's always with anything there can be like divisiveness, but it, it really was like a peaceful demonstration. Well, that's good to know. That's really mm -hmm. good to know. So now let's go ahead and segue. I want to go ahead and talk about all of this TikTok drama that has been going on since over the weekend. If you guys don't know, uh, Jeffree Star, we thought we left him in, you know, 2020, but um, he's, been, he's been around here. He's been making his TikTok videos and everything else. So Jeffree Star took to TikTok on Friday to basically make it loud and clear that he was calling out beauty gurus who have taken over the TikTok space. And one of those beauty gurus is a young lady named Michaela uh, Noriega. I'm probably butchering her last name, but we're just going to call her Michaela. Yeah, I don't know how to say her last name either. And I know you watch her a lot. Mm -hmm. so, what, so what do you see happening as far as this whole situation? Well, so the way that I took it, because I mean, me personally, a, a lot of people don't really, or at least, you know, everybody's on TikTok now. A lot of the beauty gurus of, you know, the past years have been on YouTube. Everything's on TikTok now. So she has really blown up. I mean, anything that she recommends, you know, because it's usually she doesn't have, as far as I know, like her own products. She recommends other products like, you know, if you're in Walmart or CVS or Walgreens or something, she's like, oh, my God, this foundation is amazing. This mascara is amazing. And it's pretty affordable products or stuff off Amazon, anything that's kind of trending. So mm -hmm. you can kind of tell that she's promoting this stuff. But anytime she does it, like, I, you know, I'll be in Walmart like, oh, let me check it out. Let me go see. It's sold out. So she definitely has gotten uh, a, a name for herself. People watch her. The products that she recommends are affordable and uh, they like it. But this recently she had reviewed this mascara. And to me. It, it looked like she had on, because, you know, the comments, they was dragging her. They said, those are some Adele uh, Wispies. And mm -hmm. it did look like that. Um, it just, you know, and her acting and, all, oh, my God, these are so amazing. I call bullshit. I don't think those were her real lashes. And I, I'm seriously, like, flabbergasted how TikTok and the, has just completely in shambles right now over like exposing her as a fake. She lied. The comments are dragging her. I, everything on my For You page is just all about how she's a fake and a horrible human being. So, you know, yeah, you're going in on her. And now from what I saw, what kind of started it was this lady named Kathleen Lights. And now all these people have millions of followers on TikTok. Um, I'm not big on TikTok like that. I don't go on TikTok every day, but even I was able to find out this tea. 
about mm-hmm. all this mess that was going on on Friday. And so Kathleen Lights came out and, you know, she's usually drama free. She doesn't kick up a bunch of dust, but she kind of felt the way about Michaela's review. So I'm going to go ahead and play the video so we can watch it. I feel like I'm going to regret posting this because I love my peers. I love the beauty community and I stay out of drama. I don't want, I don't want to talk shit about anybody like at all. Um, but I was just stretching after my workout and I was on TikTok and I saw like a big influencer who like I respect and like she's awesome and I and I and I like her TikToks a lot. But I just saw a sponsored post. Um, I'm like I'm like shaking because I'm so shocked. I'm like shaking because I'm so shocked. I saw her do a sponsored post, which that doesn't matter because uh, whatever sponsorships are awesome. I do them all the time. Um, but it was about a mascara. And when she shows like the finished product of the second coat, she's like wearing Ardell Demi Wispies or something. Like there's falsies there. Like it's very clear. It's very, very clear. But she's saying that they're not falsies. It's just the mascara. I'm just like, damn, damn. That really sucks. Like for the rest of us who are so honest. (laughs) That really sucks. Kind of disappointed me, but what can you do? I feel- All right. So that was Kathleen Lights, and that's what she had to say about the situation. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys the original video of the girl um, and what she's promoting that's caused all of this drama. Look how long and lengthened my lashes look. You, this literally just changed my life. This looks like false. Li- this is how? What? <laughs> it's this L'Oreal telescopic lift. Look at the wand. Okay, so basically I'm taking the curved side and I'm going root to tip and I'm satin to coat the lashes. And then once you've done that, you flip the brush to the side and you use the hook comb to basically separate. This is one coat. Okay, I'm going to add a second. Look at the length. Do you see that? I am speechless and I'm not sure anyone's going to ever be able to compete with this mascara. (laughs) That that was the dang on video. Um, She's very boosted over it. And, you know, Mm -hmm. nobody can compete with this mascara, um, I guess. And for me, (laughs) I don't wear mascara. Like, I'm a lash girl. Like, I I will just pay the money. I like my lashes getting done. So Mm -hmm. I don't do the whole mascara thing just because I just don't like a lot of makeup on my face, especially around my eyes. Um, But... You know, L'Oreal does make good products, but I do feel like she has some attachments to her lashes. Yeah, I I have incredibly short, straight lashes, and I have never in my life found any mascara that is going to make them go from nothing to, to something like that. Um, it, I I would definitely say it's some Adele Wispies or maybe even some Kiss Flirty. I like those, too. Those are like the little, you know, real, real fine ones, but that's what it looked like to me. Exactly. And people are even asking her on social media. They're like, are you lash lighting us? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> lash lighting, lash lighting. So I just yeah. find that really funny. So now if that's not crazy enough, all of a sudden, nobody, nobody at all. Here comes Jeffree Star. He mm-hmm. done came out his little crip crip. <laughs> he done came out <laughs> crypt, okay, to basically yeah. speak on this. And he he took to uh, TikTok this weekend and he says, I hear you loud and clear. Makeup reviews coming back this week. Hashtag makeup, hashtag beauty, hashtag makeup review. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys what Jeffree Star had to say. Oh, I definitely have been hearing you loud and clear this week. You've woken up the motherfucking beast. And I'll be reviewing makeup starting again next week. A lot of foundations and mascaras and certain things I hear may be fraudulent. (laughs) <laughs> but if an unbiased motherfucking bitch that's been reviewing makeup for 10 years that has never accepted a fucking coin from one brand to ever say a product is amazing, then stay fucking tuned because the bitch is back. So this mascara has been causing quite a little bit of drama on social media today. Let's try it out. So this is the new L'Oreal Telescopic Lift Mascara. And I did receive this in PR, but unlike a lot of the other videos going up right now, I was not paid to talk about this. Let's try it out and see 
if the hype is actually as good as people are saying. Something tells me that it won't be. But I'm always down for a good mascara, so who knows? This is my lashes with no curl. So I'll give a little curly curl so you guys can see. As you guys can see, my natural lashes are definitely not bad. I feel like they are probably longer than the average mascara wearing girly. However, they're not like crazy up to my eyebrow, so I should prefer. <laughs> okay, so you're supposed to like put it on with one side and like flip the wand in the end to like separate the lashes. My first impressions are that it's definitely doing a good job. So once I have the mascara applied, you're supposed to go into the other side and use it to separate the lashes. And here is what it is giving. I just blinked like seven times. I'm gonna give it one final curl and here is the finished result. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I was a little bit skeptical about this mascara just because of some of the reviews that I have seen, but now I wish that I was getting paid for this review like everybody else, because <laughs> I think it's actually pretty good. It did a nice job of lifting up the lashes, they look nice and black. It's, you know, a good quality mascara that I would probably reach for again and no Ardell Wispy is necessary. I'm like already mad about Michaela's response to this whole mascara thing, even though it hasn't happened, because she's gonna do what she always does when she gets caught faking before and afters, this and the other. She, a few months ago, like she had been really called out for um, photoshopping and video editing her afters with like foundation and stuff. And this is what pisses me off. And this is coming from someone who has an ED. Every time. She gets on with tears in her eyes and she's like, I haven't eaten the soda and that makes me lie online for money. The lengths she's willing to go to manipulate her audience to keep this cash cow going is just so unbelievable and so unforgivable. She just purposely misses the point every time and makes it about mental health when it's like people wouldn't even be pissed at you right now if you could just tell the truth. And people are going to comment and be like, every influencer lies, blah, blah, blah. Don't make your brand being real and being honest then. Like, it's just so annoying. So obviously, this mascara is causing all types of controversy. But guess who wins in all of this? L'Oreal is having well, a yeah. fucking field day right now. <laughs> yeah, people are saying they can't even find it in the store. It's being sold out like crazy. Oh, yeah. Because people want to see, will it really make their lashes grow that long? And, you know, that's the one thing about the beauty guru community. They've been just so, they literally ruined their own reputations and reviews, not all of them, of course, by all the antics that were being played on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I mean, they totally ruined the YouTube beauty community because of all the drama. But a lot of these folks were taking huge sponsorship deals just to say that a product was, oh my gosh, the best product ever. Oh, I'm team Morphe brushes. But then this company pays you more and now you're team elf brushes or just whatever brushes are out there. You know, so a lot of these people were driven by money and not necessarily by reviews. And that is one thing I will give to Jeffree Star is that he was not paid to do any reviews. He had a big enough fan base. He sold his own makeup. So when he, when he tried stuff out, he basically came for the most part. Sometimes he could be biased, you know, because he would throw shade all the time at Kylie oh, yeah. and her products. But, you know, for the most part, he would be fair with most of his reviews. But I also find this very interesting that all of these YouTube beauty gurus, especially these huge ones, have now gone to TikTok. And oh, yeah. they're not getting as much attention on TikTok as they were on YouTube because it's a whole nother set of people on TikTok who have been doing reviews and building up their fan base. So I believe people like Jeffree Star and James Charles, they're trying to create this controversy to try and get them not only followers, but to try and get people looking at their brand again, because Jeffree Star's makeup is no longer selling like it was a few years ago. Yeah, they definitely uh, use this opportunity uh, to just, like you said, just come up out of nowhere. And it, it does seem like they're... Um, their quickness might, they might have a little bit of jealousy, you know, now mm -hmm. th she probably did throw some sauce on that, but they're definitely using this as a way to monetize a way to capitalize off the situation that way. Oh, Je cause I keep seeing all this shit on TikTok, and I'm like, Oh, Jeffree star come save us. And it's like, when the fuck was anybody talking about Jeffree star? And then now all of a sudden, you know, everybody's back to loving him again. So, um, but, but with the internet is so fake. Right. It's so fake because not even that long ago, everybody hated him. Now, you know, he's the savior of some sort. And uh, with Michaela, I, I think she's she's the popular girl right now. She seems appears to be relatable. People, you know, 
She she has a very distinct voice, all that stuff. Um, she just seems like your everyday type person. And as far as I've watched, it hasn't been a lot of drama like was on YouTube. But it seems like, oh, now here's some drama and some chaos. Here comes, you know, the the agents of chaos to latch on to that and capitalize off the situation. Yeah, I, I definitely get broke tease. Now, I'm not saying he's broke, broke. I'm not saying that because Jeffree Star is definitely worth, you know, millions and I'm mm -hmm. he's invested a lot of his money. But I'm getting the income is not coming in like it used to tease. Okay? Right. Whereas before when he would post videos on YouTube, I mean, easily within a week, he would have like six, seven million views, 10 million views easily. And now when he posts on YouTube, I mean, he's lucky if he breaks a million. And that's for a lot of these big gurus. I think a lot of people have just tuned out. They're tired of it. Um, they were tired of, you know, them flaunting their lifestyles and their wealth in their face. A lot of people are over that. So I think with Michaela, because she is more relatable, she looks very plain Jane to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she's a thick girl. She has this weird Boston accent. I told you that earlier. I don't, I feel like her accent isn't real for some, just my opinion. It's a little bit too saucy. I know people from Boston. She, she tries a little bit too hard to, you know, um, I and nah, yeah. nah. <laughs> like she tried a little bit too hard to make it look like, yeah, I'm from Boston. Our you voice know. is very abrasive. Yo, what's up? Hey, tea sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.